morning, superstars. So today I am going to teach you, I must say at your massive request, I've had so many requests for this, how to not bounce in your sitting trot. I can't wait to share this with you. So guys, you gave me such phenomenal feedback and honestly sent that video somewhat viral of how to stop bouncing in the canter. I, can't, I couldn't believe how much you guys loved it. You've asked for the trot. I wanted to take a really good time to think about it and exactly the same as I did for a canter, use a strategic planned proven system that will stop you bouncing in your trot. Okay, so there's three components we're gonna go through. First, we're gonna go through why do you bounce? What mechanically happens to your body that makes you bounce, okay? And the bouncing, good boy Wesley, is the symptom. The symptom of some other things that make you bounce. We're gonna tell you what that is. The next thing we're gonna do is address the cause of those symptoms. So what things that can we do to address the cause of your bouncing, okay? On the third step, I'm gonna give you exercises to break down your ability to do a sit trot so that you don't bounce in a, oh, hey Wes, <laughs> in a manageable, cool way that you can do no matter what level you're at. Okay, so that's the three things we're gonna do. But this, this is the epic bit. I am also gonna teach you how your sitting trot can be this magical crystal ball in terms of how you're going with your training scale. Doesn't matter what level you are, whether you've just got your horse in your bit or whether you're a Grand Prix rider, your sitting trot is this crystal ball to actually how good your horse is going. And I am gonna tell you about that one as well. When we look at the symptoms, what actually happens to our body that makes us bounce, okay? Now, you know I'm the analogy queen with the banana and the flap like a duck, and if no one knows what I'm talking about, these two videos here tell you about that. You might think it's crazy, but it works really well. This is all about the peg analogy. Have a look at this old fashioned wooden peg. It's not spring loaded, it's one of those old fashioned ones that you can make a little bit wider with force, but you can't really open it. Now think of a pair of jeans or a duvet or whatever it is, loads of clothes and laundry that you've got on a line and you're trying to wedge that peg over the top of all of that, those garments to try and keep it on the clothesline. It's getting tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and the more you push it down, the more it spreads and looks like it's gonna get around it and gonna seat down on the clothesline, but all of a sudden, boom, it just flies off and pings off. That's actually the same with our seat. So Toby's my cameraman. Tobes, come in here and have a look at my seat. When you start to ping off like the peg, if you look into here, Toby, your legs will often be doing this. So if you look at me normally, then look at me when I'm gripping. They grip in, okay? You'll see that your toes will often go down. Your heels will go up instead of being lovely and nice like this. Everything pings. And as you do that, Toby, could you please get a great shot of my bum for everybody? And as you do that, you'll see that you create this space here. And the more you pull, the more you come up, the more everything pokes out. And then the, the way to sit, which is to be a part of your horse, disappears. So you end up just like that clothes peg, pinging up out of the saddle. So it's not about gripping with your legs. As soon as you've gripped with your legs, you can't sit trot anymore, okay? It's not about trying to drive him into the seat. This is not Friday night, ladies. <laughs> this is horse riding and we just want to relax, okay? All of those things that we do to try harder when we can't sit trot actually makes it worse and you end up with this massive snowball effect. Okay, and this peg analogy, the visualization of the peg, 
This actually is a little bit of a precursor to the crystal ball later. To the crystal ball where it teaches you, hey, this also teaches me, this also shows me when my horse isn't going so good within the training scale. But we'll get back to that at the end, okay? So the peg analogy. Picture the peg, visualize the peg. You are a peg on your horse about to be pinged off. That's why you're bouncing. So how do we solve it? So guys, now we know what the symptom is. The symptom is us <laughs> pinging off the saddle, coming out, pinging like that peg, okay? Now why? What's the cause of that symptom? Here's Wesley. Uh, I'm not in the picture enough. Sorry, I didn't introduce him, guys. This is my almost 19-year-old Grand Prix horse. This is Wessel. He is um, a very special little monkey, and um, you do see him in some of, the, some of these videos. So, uh, yeah, he's a beautiful little boy. Bit special, doesn't realise he's 19. <laughs> but we'll get on to that. So, anyway. So... You know what the symptom is, we're looking for the cause. The biggest cause is, is just biomechanically how you sit on your horse. A lot of people have this, this incorrect information that you need to grip around your horse's body and hold on tight. Absolutely not, okay? What I want you to do is stand on the ground now, just like you normally would, put your head, leg, legs about shoulder width apart, maybe a little bit further, and just squat down. Okay, squat down. Pelvis a little bit forward so it's not pointing out like this and just squat and feel the ground. That's actually what the horse should feel like underneath you. It's not that you're gripping with your legs or that you're driving with your seat. It's just that you happen to be standing on the ground with your, which is your stirrups. Your pelvis is pointed up towards his ears a little bit so that you're sitting on your bottom, not on your front sections, okay? And that the horse is just traveling underneath you so that you're almost traveling on air above him. You have contact with him, but it's light, it's soft. This is all about self-carriage. When we think self-carriage, we think about the reins. It's also about this. But riders have it in their head, but, uh, I gotta hold, I gotta grip, I gotta stay on. No, no, no. You just have to stand on the ground and have your horse underneath you. That's it. So, how do we make sure you're standing on the ground? Easy thing stirrups. So many people have too long a stirrups, okay? So, let me take my feet out of the stirrups. Let's imagine that I can't reach them. Look at my body. I can't squat, I'm stuck. I can't get out, I'm stuck on the horse. I need a solid, oh gee, oh Wesley. I need a solid surface on the ground where I can even stand up. So that's a really good measure. If when you get on your horse, you can't stand up and keep your legs relatively exactly the same as what they were when you're sitting down, it means your stirrups are too long. There's an amazing article written that says long stirrups doesn't equal long legs. If you want long legs, you need a surface to be able to stretch down into. So first things first, make sure your stirrups are short enough. Okay, yet again, how do we measure that? Stand up. If you can't stand up, your stirrups are too long. Okay, and you need to be able to stand up without locking your knee out like that. You need to be able to stand up and still keep a slight bend in your knee, okay? That is step one. Step two is all about fear. Or the, <laughs> where's it in there again? Or the perception that you may fall off, the perception that you may look stupid, that people are gonna judge you, that you're bouncing around like a crazy person and you don't wanna be judged. It's amazing how much influence that has to the way you ride. Okay, it's amazing how much that can make you bounce, just the fear of bouncing. Okay, or the fear of falling off. Have a look at these videos here. So look at these two here. This one of them, the left side, is me, in my perception, bouncing around like the worst rider in the world. I'd be embarrassed to go out. 
The next one is me writing how I think is correct. Yes, you can see the difference, sure, but they're not that embarrassing, are they? It's not that bad. And that's what you have to remember, and I challenge you guys to try this. Don't use your sitting trot as to how you perceive other people are going to see you. And understand as well that sitting trot while being scared makes it worse. It's a vicious cycle. So only do what you can manage. So then you see, guys, it's actually not that scary at all. And you know what? Who cares what other people say? You're learning, you're allowed to learn. So give yourself that space to learn. So now we know what it is, the peg, <laughs> what biomechanically and mentally causes the peg. Now I'm gonna teach you how to have no peg. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so now we understand why we become a clothes peg, why we bing off the horse like that and what biomechanically and mentally causes it. Now, I'll show you how to fix it because all well and good to know, but how do you fix it? Okay, now there's loads of different ways and I'm gonna give you a few exercises that you can work out that suit you, okay? If you're a person that's very nervous and actually part of the reason why you bounce and grip is through nerves, okay? Make it a really easy transition. So rather than thinking I must get a beautiful, beautiful trot all of the time and not bounce, make your goal smaller. Small. So, walk along. Think about how your seat moves in the walk. Think that you're going, I've got four beats here. Move your seat within those four beats of the walk. Visualize your legs on the ground. Think tall. So you saw even there, I was like, my legs are a little bit like this when I was thinking about it. And then I relax them down. Visualize the floor. Visualize the position in your body at the moment. And then think about what you need for trot, okay? When you go to trot, don't wait till you fail. Just get sitting trot and then go back to walk. So for example, I'm walking along. You have to excuse Wes will say he thinks he's three and not 19. So he may spook at some things. You're walking along and now I go trot. Oh, that's enough. Walk again. So I learned to get my confidence that I'm not going to lose my horse. So I simply just go walk like this and then, sorry Wes, <laughs> trot and walk again. And then I can, you know, it doesn't matter if I walk for another 10 circles, visualizing it, finding it, analyzing what I did right, what I did wrong, and then again, and then walk again. And again, I might do it quicker now. And then walk again. And then quicker now. And then walk again. And you see, the horse gets better at it because transitions are good for a horse anyway. And it also gives you confidence. I don't think there's anyone out there who wouldn't be confident to trot for a step or a half a step and then walk again. Take control, take ownership. Once you've got a bit of confidence, you can increase that. So you just do it for a count. So let's say we go for five. So we trot. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, walk. Trot. One, two, three, four, five, walk. Trot. One, two, three, four, five, walk. So you see, you're taking over. If at any time you start to bounce and you lose control, abort mission. Go back to walk. So let's do it as if you were struggling, okay? So I say I'm gonna do five steps. One, ooh, 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 walk. Let yourself walk. Let me try and make it as bad as I can, ready? So, try it. Oh, oh, walk. But you see, by giving yourself the power to say it's okay to walk when you lose your balance, that's okay. Relax a little bit more. Try again, okay, I'm gonna try again now. I need, oh, I'm leaning forward. Oh, no, 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 re, re, abort mission, go back again. Okay, oh, no, 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 I put that inside, abort mission, go back again. Center, two legs, sit tall. Oh my God, I got it, oh my God, I lost it again, walk. 
it's okay to do that. Build and build and build. Okay, so that's one line you can go down if the reason for you pegging is because you're afraid, you've got nervous issues. That's option one. Option two, let's go in a rising trot. Okay, and we make sure our horse is going really good first in a rising trot, okay? And you need to be able to do everything in rising anyway before you can sit. And guys, this is a little precursor to later on where I show you the crystal ball. So, oh sorry, he's spooking at the dog. Thank you, Jeff, for helping. <laughs> so you keep rising. And then the same thing, you just sit for a moment. So I rise, I sit for three. One, two, three, rise. I sit for three. One, two, three, rise. I plan to sit for three. One, oh, boom, just a board mission. It's all right, good boy. Go again. I'm really good at that now. Let's make it nine. I'm rising. I sit for nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I rise. Good boy, Wessie. So you're able to take control, make a plan, have a plan for success. Let yourself abort mission. Let yourself go for a walk. Let yourself find your way so that you don't get stuck into, or Jeff is really not helping today, is he? <laughs> Good one, Jeff. He's like, I gave you the opportunity to be out here before, Jeff. You weren't interested. What's going on? <laughs> And as you see guys, we leave the dog in here. We let them be like this. Wes is particularly spooky. And if I don't keep his scenario spooky, he gets spooky all the time. And again, if you want to see a video on that, have a look up here. We've got videos on spooky horses. But back to it. So you see already, if you've got a problem with fear, solved. If you've just got a problem with strength, not being able to keep in the right spot, etc, etc, you now have a plan. It never works if you just keep trying, okay? Let me show what happens when you keep trying in a wrong way, okay? When you don't abort mission. And this will be why most people that are watching this haven't had success, okay? So let's do it from the rising trot. Now, he's a school horse, he's Grand Prix, okay? Now, instead of sitting for a set amount of time that I decide with a plan to abort, let me do it in a bad way, see what he does. He comes above the bit. Oh, oh my God, oh, 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 he loses rhythm. Everything, oh my, oh, he, oh, oh. <laughs> he spooks. <laughs> How was that for getting that on film? Sorry, Wesley, good boy. But it shows you why it goes so bad. Because when you're getting it wrong, you lose rhythm. You lose the fundamentals of the way the horse goes. So actually, it can't be good. You'll never get it right because you've actually created a problem with the bouncy sitting trot. Whereas, and you saw how bad that got, as I told you, he has no idea he's 19 years old. Watch now, even though I've caused that problem, okay? This is in real time, guys. I've caused that problem. I made him spook that much. He lost his rhythm that much. Look what happens now. It's all right, Wes. <laughs> if I just do it correctly. So he was a bit nervous when I started. So I went to my rising trot to help him find the rhythm. I'll get him past Jeff just to make sure his life's a little bit easier. <laughs> now, sit. Hey? And just by doing it in the right way, he's fine. Good boy, Wessel. Do you see, guys? It's through all your trying that makes it so difficult. So now, 
I'm gonna teach you the crystal ball. So this, guys, is relevant for any of you that are at a higher level. Now, when I say a higher level, that might mean that you can just do novice and you can sit trot without bouncing. It might mean you're a Grand Prix rider trying to get that really hard corner to, cor corner to middle half pass line or pirouettes on the center line. This applies the same, okay? And it applies the same for canter and trot. But we're gonna talk about trot today because we're here. So again, if you want canter, click this button, hit this button here, it talks about that. Okay, so let's have a look at the crystal ball. Okay guys, so, Everything you do in your riding, you need to be able to do in a rising trot as well as a sitting trot. Just because in a test it's in sitting doesn't mean that in your riding you can only do it in sitting. What rising trot tests for you is to whether the horse is there on his own four legs and in his own way through the training scale or whether you're holding him there with his body. And you never ever want to do that. You never ever want to be holding him with his body. So for example, guys, a travers in a rising trot. Can we do a travers while we're rising? Can we keep the quarters in? Can we make him travel like this without sitting? Okay? Equally, can we do a half pass without sitting? That he's traveling through the training scale, his hind loins are to the bridle, and actually, it's all through the training scale, good boy, that ensures he can do it. He spooked again a little bit there. That ensures that he can do it. It's simple. What we often do is we start to clamp. So if you watch the same exercises now, in a clamping sitting trot, you're gonna see what happens. He loses rhythm. He slows down. He pulls out all these different buttons that I don't necessarily want because I'm squeezing. Even if I'm sitting up tall, Good boy, Wes. He's getting confused. But even though, I'm, even though I'm sitting up tall looking pretty, I'm clamping. So when I go for a half pass, what happens? Quarters lead. Rhythm changes. He's against me. Actually, what am I doing different? Look at all the confusion. Good boy. All I'm doing is squeezing with my legs. I'm being a peg. That is the crystal ball to say to you, Hey, he's not able to do it on his own four legs. He's not able to do this by himself. So let me do exactly the same exercise. Good boy, Wessie. Without clamping, just by sitting through my saddle, thinking about the connection of my horse. And you see it's immediate, guys, as well. I can solve this even after such horrific things prior. All because the clamping was showing that there was something wrong with my training scale. So if I had that happen and I wasn't able to relax my seat, okay, then I would go back and I'd do those movements in rising. Doing those movements in rising ensures that the horse is doing it on the aids, not driven by your seat. So now guys, let me show you, once you understand that you need to be able to do all the fancy things in rising trot as well, that you're able to sit trot without having the peg come into play, what sort of excitement you can create. You can create massive extensions, my 19 year old beauty. You can bring it back to normal. You can ride a little passage. You can go forward again. Good boy. You can go trot PF. No problem, that's all right, no problem at all. Little trip there. Good boy, Wes. 
into facade, into extension again. All because you want to. Listen to me, I'm not puffing, I'm not tired. Why? Because I don't peg. And I'm sure peg has some other reason that I don't know about, but peg is my reason. <laughs> I don't, I'm not a wooden peg. Mwah. I hope you guys learnt so much. I hope that this was like this massive eye opener for you that you can do it. You can do it. So much you can do it. I believe in you. You've now got the tools. Believe in yourself. Okay? Watch some of my lives. We give away prizes all the time because I want you guys to have the opportunity to ride horses like this. I believe that every rider can ride like this on a horse like this if they want to. Help me grow the channel so I can make that happen. Now I'm huffing. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm so appreciative and I hope you loved this episode. Mwah!